Okay, so my um, my friend Sherry wants to get married to her friend Lonnie, and they want to go to Massachusetts, but they don't have enough money. And I told her, why don't you just get married in San Antonio? And she said, well, it's really important, very important, that it be recognized somewhere by some place. If we got married in San Antonio, it would never be recognized. Mm -hmm. And so there, if they went there, even in the state of Massachusetts, even though Texas law wouldn't respect it, they at least would know that somewhere in the United States they would be seen as a legal couple, and it would give them a symbolic, I don't know, triumph. It would be a symbolic triumph for them to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Which I see, from my point of view, is like, just get married and be happy here. But they want legal recognition. It's important. Yeah. Wouldn't you? Yes. I don't know what it's like to be disenfranchised, though. So it's like, I, you know, it's hard for somebody who already has a right to see what it would be like not to have it. That's a good point. Well, mm -hmm. like you, if you think about not being able to have the right to get married, mm -hmm. it's just, it's, it's like, you know, you're limiting, therefore, their lives. Not just their rights, you're limiting their lives. Well, you think about, in China, you can't have more than one child. And that's crazy to me. That seems like some sort of, you know, police state mm -hmm. where it's such a personal decision uh, to have children and everything. And I guess it's to me, it's like ridiculous to limit people's personal decisions. But I don't know. It's just another place where the state needs to stop meddling. And there's no consequence. And some people might say, for a moral sense, there's no consequence in legalizing gay marriage. There's no consequence other than maybe there might be a financial burden because then you would have to cover more people with insurance and things. And you might have a lot of rights. And then tax, I guess you would get tax breaks because married couples get tax breaks to legally recognize. And I think that's the bottom line that people don't talk about is that it's, it's a financial, there's some money attached to mm -hmm. legally recognizing. Morally, it's, the state shouldn't be concerned at all. State should have no right to interfere with who we love, and I don't know. I also wonder what uh, some heterosexuals think when they think that it, it's going to spread. Right. <laughs> like the, the the fear that if we allow some people to get married, every everybody will want to be gay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I find like ridiculous, uh, completely. Well, and, and it's this underlying under assumption that people choose their sexuality, which right. I think is a wrong You're assumption. Wrong yeah, it's like you're not you're not choosing your sexuality and that if we were all to do what we wanted to, we would all be promiscuous and and have sex with each other, which I don't think is is true at all. Uh-huh. And I think that's part of the prejudice that you probably see as as we move towards just like we've had prejudice with every other uh, group that's been oppressed and that is to have stereotypes about them and uh the idea that there's sexual depravity with homosexuality is still stigmatized, that this is somehow deviant. But see, and actually recognizing marriage would probably promote more monogamy mm -hmm. and end that sort of uh, idea that there's always promiscuity. Right, exactly. It's so. a vicious circle. Mm -hmm. I like how you two are so open with each other, like you're very open with, Frank, with Zoe. Well, you can't shelter in our society. Information is is like uh, no, but available. So, like yeah. if you don't, if you don't like, um, like if I didn't know what like um, homosexuals were, mm -hmm. then one day, what if I heard it from school and I was like, "Mommy, oh, what's homosexual?" It's, it just doesn't work. Right. It's <laughs> better. It's better natural. Like Santa. Yeah. <laughs> don't want to hear it at school. <laughs> want to hear it at home. Gays are just like Santa. <laughs> <laughs> well, you make up your own mind, right? I mean, you really think that I form all your opinions, or do you think you decide your opinions? Well, you have, you are obviously going to have some impact on my, you know, opinions. Yes. But you hear contradictory, you, you have, hear other opinions about the mm -hmm. subject, right? What would your grandparents say about the subject? Well, they think that they're going against God's law, but... By getting married. Mm -hmm. People will always bring, um, like, the maker into that's the, what's it's what gives foundation to the power of government. Huh. Uh, and it's underneath everything, even though you can intellectually separate it, it's not. There's moral 
there's moral consequences to laws that people tell, make and how they live. Um, tell them about the story um, Damon when he was like um, he was in school and they wouldn't let him say the word lesbian. Oh yes, his mother is uh, the couple friend and I that wanted to, the ones that want to get married in Massachusetts. Their son was in school and he got in trouble for using the word lesbian. And his mothers are lesbians, mm -hmm. and he was like chastised for that by the teacher. Oh yeah. And he was like, what's wrong with the word? Because in his mind, he's been raised. That's just a factual name. word. Yeah, it's a factual word, but, for, but they didn't want him to speak that word in front of the other children. Nice. Mm -hmm. So there's but, all that kind see, of... See, the other thing about love and marriage is that you can't like generalize it. There's no, each thing is like... Very particular yeah. to the people. That's, That's true. true. <laughs> yeah. That's another thing that makes it complicated. <laughs> yes. Is that you can't make generalizations about it too much. There are individuals. But I guess you can talk about it on the abstract as a political right. And in that sense, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> forwarding, forwarding the notion. And, and yeah, I, I try to correct people. I'm not correct them, but like at least expand their definition. And I think it always goes to that same fundamental issue which is people think that homosexuality is a choice. And that's like a fundamental premise that most mm -hmm. people have. And a wrong premise. Yeah, but it's, it's a premise that if they talked to anybody at length and they got rid of their stereotypes, they would realize this is not like a choice. That's, that's why they are afraid that it will spread. Right, it won't spread. You know, I mean, it won't spread if it's like not a choice. It's not, it's, it's not like chicken box or something. Yeah, it's not. But you have to tell other people that, the, 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 you know, then that moral stigma will change, and then you can have more people living openly, and then you can decide. It just, you know, what you want instead of seeing it as a deviant underbelly product of a promiscuous society. Oh, what was it? I, what country is it that has? Does it, oh, it was Mexico. We were talking about this the other day, that Mexico lets gay marriage be legalized. Uh -huh. They have no problem with it. That was just recently. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, but it's like there's, um, you know, there's the, um, I just wanted to bring this up. Okay. Um, there's like um, the movie, uh, there's the book Breakfast at Tiffany's. Oh, yes, we can always bring this up. Where um, the guy is gay and. Um, the main character. Yeah, or, yeah. And so that's why she's able to have such a good friendship. But then in the movie, he, they changed it. And I think that's also because of the, like, um, I don't know, what would you call it? Time period? Yeah. Yeah, the, like if you're going to make a mainstream film in 1960, you can't have a homosexual uh, person. Yes, that's like not, unless it's hidden, Very which tough. I love those old Doris Day films. <laughs> Rockets what about the one that's like, like what? What's the um? What's the um? I think it's called the Odd Couple. Yeah. Oh, with Tony Randall. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Tony Randall. I well, my dad said that. Um, that <laughs> We're really off topic now. <laughs> that there was um, that there was a movie called like Not Coming Out of the Closet or something, and it was a documentary about movies mm -hmm. that weren't. Like yeah, there was a whole code. There was a little code. But, you know, the point is, is that if you don't have to hide and your society embraces that, then the stereotypes disappear. I think that's what they're saying, that maybe we're more ready than we've ever been yeah. for releasing those stereotypes. And you can look through the same. You can look at uh, black history, and you can look at uh, every history of every oppressed uh, section of society. Yes and how the media slowly changes, how the products that we make about those groups change and our perceptions change eventually when we are um, allowed to stop making stereotypes. They, they label everything these days and it's just like, you know, there's, in the end we are all just people. It doesn't matter if we're, um, it doesn't matter our sex, it doesn't matter if we're transvestites or homosexuals or whatever. We're all just people. In the end, you know? Yes, and that's one thing that we have in common, is our humanity. Yeah.